Amazon guy and we just started a new service called My Agency Guy where we come in and help other agencies and today's show is going to be dedicated to them. So we're going to have behind the scenes we've got guests that are going to come on air and ask me live questions and if you would like to join us and ask me a question live on camera you can spend about 10 minutes with me on camera. We'll put a link right there in the top YouTube comment as well as the YouTube description.
My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy, and we just started a new service called My Agency Guy, where we come in and help other agencies. And today's show is going to be dedicated to them. So we're going to have behind the scenes, we've got guests that are going to come on air and ask me live questions. And if you would like to join us and ask me a question live on camera, you can spend about 10 minutes with me on camera. We'll put a link right there in the top YouTube comment, as well as the YouTube description. Welcome to our behind the scenes guest. Uh, Thomas, do you want to go first? Have your question posted in the chat. Uh, we'll bring you in first. Uh, whoever is in the behind the scenes is AMZ. Feel free to type out your question, turn on your webcam. We'll be going live in four minutes. Five and ten seconds.
Hello and welcome to the My Agency Guy Summit. And today I'm gonna to be doing a live AMA. We're gonna have some guests, agency owners and business owners and entrepreneurs come on camera to ask me questions. We'll also pepper in some questions for the introverts who don't wanna come on camera and post your questions in the comments, but we'll be given priority to those that come behind the scenes, come on camera like a talk show host sort of TV show kind of thing. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy, a $20 million annual grossing agency with over 400 clients, more than 500 employees around the world. And you can ask me literally anything you'd like about what it's like to run an agency. We all know it's a pretty difficult thing to run an agency. It's your job all day long to shovel manure sometimes as an agency owner, right? So if that resonates, that means you need to ask a question today. Uh, it's not all rosy colored glasses, that's for sure. Our first guest is going to be coming on in just a moment. But first, just as a reminder, we do have an agency summit going on right now. This is the one live video we're going to be sharing for free to everybody. You can get this and many other guests by signing up for our myagencyguysummit.com. $97 is the cost. You'll get access to all the videos in perpetuity and a bunch of other cool stuff. So check that out. Uh, all right, let's bring our first guest on. So, Thomas, how are you doing today? You're on mute, by the way. One moment. Do you I hear me? You. Yeah, now I can. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, I represent Shipbox LLC, a BM service provider located in Downers Grove, Illinois. We've been doing business for like from 2017 in the same location. And I'm still, you know, in a warehouse, you know, our office located in a warehouse. That's why you see all the equipment around me. Nothing fake, you know. You get your hands I, dirty on a daily basis, right? Yes. it's. I like when, you know, office, you know, connected to the warehouse. And because we are growing, you know, we have we are different from some other, you know, prep centers because we uh, concentrate on uh, uh, automation. We have, you know, robotics, all that, you know, like conveyors, pr printers, everything to automate because we believe, you know, that uh, automation is the main, you know, way to to go with the prep service. And I have a question. How sure. can we expand, you know, our business connecting with, you know, different agencies working with the different clients? And it's my main goal, you know, to get more clients coming to our, you know, service because we have like one of the best pricing in the market. With automation, we can lower the price, not like killing uh, competition, but, you know, providing the best service for the, our customers. And my goal is to connect with agencies. And how can we do that? So how many customers do you have today? Yeah, have around like maybe 500. You know, because with the uh, Amazon sellers, it's like uh, yep. you have a customer, then the, you know, account gets locked or something for them. And I you had like a customer, for a I had yep. a customer who was shipping like uh, 100,000 units of probiotics every month. And suddenly, you know, he has a problems with the Amazon and he stops. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very that's hard. That's the life of an Amazon know. seller right there. Uh, yep, it's, so, it's, it's very complicated. You have, you know, maybe we have like 1,000 clients, but some, you know, like uh, stop selling because disappointed or something and some, you know, growing. It's okay. how it works. So, so I got a couple ideas for you. Idea number one, if you have 1,000 customers and at least 500 of them are actively selling on Amazon, I guarantee you right now that at least 1% of those, at least five of those, could benefit from an Amazon agency. So the best way to get more agencies to connect to you is to send them business, right? So yeah. law, of, law of reciprocity. If you start referring out your clients to agencies, they like innately human nature is to refer them back. So you have a huge advantage uh, because you already have a customer base. And so uh, when you go, there's a couple of questions I love to ask customers all the time. You know what do you wish we would start doing? What do you wish we'd stop doing? What do you wish we'd do more of? And so when you ask them those questions, a good follow-up to that can be, hey, so I understand you want us to start doing X, Y, Z. Well, do you guys need an Amazon agency to help grow your sales? We can we can give you a referral. And, and then you could have like a, a list of two or three agencies you refer out to, build some referral deals, get 10% you know, referral credits, which is pretty industry standard for, for sending an introduction. Uh, and, and build it that way. So that would be idea number one, law of, law of reciprocity, use your customer base and, and refer out to other agencies. Okay. Second idea 
would be to go and join a bunch of podcasts, make a bunch of contents, and go on the circuit trying to add as much value as you possibly can. So kind of like what you're doing today, if you if you said, you know, the number one tip about how to lower your FBA fees was X um, or other Amazon tips that most people don't know, like, you know, how to claw back things, how to deal with Amazon, how to make your first shipment. If you get become an expert on those topics, the things that all of your customers need anyway, and then go talk to other podcasts, other influencers, other agencies, and then add value like that, right after that podcast ends, what happens? A, you're gonna get some logistics customers calling you down, but B, the agency is gonna start connecting with you as well. Perfect, you know, because just what we need, we can, you know, advertise some agencies on our website, we have some traffic, you know, but, uh, it, it, you know, some agencies can contact us and have interest, you know, and, you know, working together, we'd be happy to add, you know, links. It's very difficult to, to build uh, affiliate relationships digitally um, in our age and in our sector. It needs to be like tactical, guerrilla, one-to-one. -one. You need to have a personal relationship with these guys. Uh, and so offer to buy agency owners, you know, a steak dinner, go to the summits and say, Hey, can I buy you a steak dinner? I just want you to have my name in your phone. And can I buy it for you? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so the, 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 the disadvantage is, that a lot of times I have is I've never once ever had a customer say they like their logistics company, not a single mm -hmm. one ever. And I've asked. And so and generally, it's because of one or two problems. Either one, it's too expensive, you get what you pay for, or two, you get what you pay for, and it's not expensive enough, and then they don't communicate. And so if you sell into those objections, you can get on my referral sheet uh, pretty quick. Thomas, it was great having you on. Uh, you know, wish you the best of luck connecting with other agencies. Okay. You're in the right place. So uh, Thomas, if Thank someone you. wants to get in touch with you, uh, how, what's the best way to do that? It's, we have a website, www.shipux.com, like shipux.com, and it's the best, you know, way to come communicate with us. I'll put that link in uh, the um, chat there for you guys so you can see that shipux.com. Oh, it looks like I typed in a bunch of other chat. Let me fix that real quick, and then we'll send you on your way. All right, Thomas, thanks for coming Thank on. Thank you so um, much. You so can continue much. watching on, on YouTube. We'll, we'll, we'll pop you out here uh, and kick you out of the studio so we can make room for other guests. Uh, Josh has got his camera on. We'll bring Josh in next. Uh, when you guys join, by the way, please turn your webcam on, post your question in the behind the scenes so we can queue you up. Josh, how you doing? Doing well, thank you. Where are you calling in from? Seattle. All right. Other side of the world, uh, other side of the country, excuse me. I'm, I'm in sure. Atlanta. It's been raining cats and dogs over here. So It's raining here today as well. We had a blustery night. All right. Uh, tell, tell us what your question is. How can I help? So how do you manage all the different accounts you have? What I mean by that is from a login perspective on the entitlements, uh, do you use the same login for every client? Do you use virtual desktops? Do you use various IPs uh, to protect all the assets of your clients? Great question. I get this question almost like once a week. We need to build like a whole landing page on this question. We get it so often. Um, so first I'm gonna post a resource, myamazonguy.com slash OTP. Uh, First thing you need to do is make sure you have an OTP system. A couple of facts about Amazon. You cannot use VoIP anymore when you create accounts or even sub users. So yep. Google Voice was how I started my agency. I, I had several hundred clients all using those logins. Um, we currently use burner phones to open up new logins. Some agencies choose to do one login per account. I choose to do 100 uh, clients or accounts per user, sub user. And uh, so I currently have access to about a thousand Seller Central accounts. I've never had an account suspended, never had an issue with connected accounts or anything like that. Um, you, you typically will want to have one email capping out somewhere between 90 and 100 accounts. Once you get to 110, it will freeze. So I generally try not to go over 100. And when it gets to 90, we start going to the next email just to play it safe. Okay. Um, the reason why I started with OTP to begin with is because uh, depending on the size or the scale, so how many clients are you at right now? Uh, 30. Okay. So, and then how many employees? 36. All right. So Josh, with 36 employees, about the same number of clients, 40 clients there, uh, you're, you're going to have 
some confusion, some turnover and access points. And so you could fit all of your clients today under one email. Um, with client turnover, sometime in year two, you'll have to pop open that second email. And this is when it gets a lot more complicated. Uh, the other thing too is with lots of accounts under one email, you're gonna have some brand registry issues and you may need to create uh, additional logins anyway for brand registry to work. Right around account access number 30, brand registry will start not being as effective. They won't return the calls, they won't pick up the phone, they won't respond to the tickets as well sometimes or they just flat out deny your tickets. And so we sometimes have to use a second email uh, every 30 accounts for brand registry. So if that happens to you, that's pretty normal. Um, Amazon is okay with, with multiple account access. They're okay with owning multiple accounts. They're okay with agencies. They're okay with aggregators. They're well aware of all of our ecosystems. They just haven't given us a lot of tools to manage their ecosystem and, and their situation. Uh, when I first started out, I used Google OTP Authenticator, which is what I have referenced in myamazonguy.com slash OTP for those that wanna replicate my OTP process. That's really great for boutique agencies, up to 40 accounts do pretty okay. I today use 1Password, and the nice thing about a paid password management platform, there's probably others that do the same thing, LastPass or otherwise, um, but 1Password, you can program the QR code, the OTP into the system one time, and then all users have access to it. When an employee terminates or leaves, uh, you can then remove their 1P access and then all of the accounts um, are secure after that, and you don't have to worry about them saving QR codes and some of the other things that happen when you try and use a Google QR system. Okay. Uh, so I know I'm hitting you with the knowledge dump here because I have a lot to say on this topic. One more thought, and I'll turn it back over to you for a follow-up. Um, so uh, the other thing we do is every time an employee turns over, we do an, a, a password refresh, but the nice thing about having one password is that it doesn't notify anybody and it, with 500 employees, we're like an airport. You know, I, I live at the Atlanta airport, busiest airport in the world. Agencies are kind of like airports too. There's a lot of people coming and going. You got contractors on the side sometimes. Um, and, and so if you're trying to update passwords every day or every other week or whatever, it can cause some internal stress. So a system like 1Password will prevent that stress. Nobody gets a notification when the password changes. They simply just have to click the 1P button to fill it in every time they log in and everything's good to go. So how did I do on that, Josh? And what follow-ups you got? That was good. So one password, I can look into that. That would be very helpful because when turnover, it's a pain to change all passwords. Yes. Um, so we you have, still have a, to change the passwords. It's just not as impactful on your staff. Correct. Uh, second thing is we had a client that we brought on that had issues with their uh, US or their Mexico and Canada. And then it affected another client that turned their Mexico and Canada off. That's I've seen I that. Wondering, that's what I was wondering if you have separate virtual desktops or if you've run into that. No, um, just get the original Canada or Mexico unsuspended and everything will be fine. Those are relatively easy to unsuspend. The U.S. ones are a lot harder, but Canada and Mexico, for whatever reason, Amazon just has an easier way to unsuspend them. They usually don't take very long, sometimes two to five days. It's not too bad at all. Uh, and then once the original is unsuspended, the other ones um, are as simple as filing a one-line ticket sometimes. Um, so account association generally doesn't happen at the agency level. It usually is more common at the address level. So like a logistics partner. I've seen more Mexico-Canada suspension issues when the logistics partner address is the same across those accounts. And then there's um, some challenges with that. I'll be honest, though, I haven't seen as much of this lately. I do think Amazon's getting smarter about it. Um, and I, but, but overall, agencies, no risk, never had an account suspended for a connection like that. Okay. Um, and Canada and Mexico, if you just file some tickets, it might be only a two to five day thing to get it turned around. Perfect. Thanks for, thanks for that. All right, Josh, good luck growing your agency. Uh, you're, you're right at that cusp. Uh, I, it's very unusual to get past 40 accounts. So I'll give you one other uh, parting piece of advice you didn't ask for. Um, to get past 40 accounts, if you're interested in doing that, you'll need to hire a second account director. So food for thought. I'll put, put, that, put a pin in on that one. Fair enough. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, Josh. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. All right. Our next guest, how are you doing? You're on mute. Go ahead and unmute first.
Yeah. Hi, Steve. Nice to see you. You too. I hope you had a wonderful uh, holiday time. Uh, we spoke like in September. And I remember. I it. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. I want to uh, thank you for that conversation as well because uh, it really motivated me. And uh, now, thankfully, I have a, uh, actually two new clients who I'm already working Congrats. with. Congrats. And actually, I'm so thankful because uh, your life just came up in the best time because I was just in my laptop, uh, just, you know, <laughs> but what I supposed to do, or like, uh, just need some advice. And they just looked Is, up. Isn't that the like the, the most common thing that happens to an agency owner? You're always in reactive mode and you're like, what yeah. What do I need to do today? And, and you know, no, no client has been pissed off and emailed me today. You know, I need to do something productive. Let me work on the business today. Exactly. Uh, so so glad, glad to have you here. How can I help you work on your business today? Well, I have two issues uh, which I would really love to hear your advice on. So um, um, I signed a, a, a client who um, is a, a bit bigger than, uh, you know, the retailer we, which we spoke uh, last year. Uh, about um, uh, so he have uh, 40 uh, uh, products and is also a bit uh, um, uh, hard for me to handle everything but I'm doing everything fine uh, but uh, the client's expectation is a little bit uh, ridiculous <laughs> I, I believe <laughs> what have you, you done for me lately what Sorry? have you done for me lately that is the question exactly exactly yeah. for my money <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, and I I already explained it to him that like, listen, uh, because he he asked me to uh, provide him uh, uh, hourly, uh, you know, details like what exactly I do in this hour, and I told him already I uh, we. Uh, signed for uh, services, we now signed for, for for hourly contract or whatever, and uh, you know because there's so many those guys to become more outcome based, right? Where you say, hey, yeah. what outcome do you want? Cool, I will charge you X dollars for Y outcome. Does that work for you? Yeah, it works for me. Cool. If I'm getting you that outcome, let me do my job. Now you see that's the problem because uh, this uh, I'm I'm from Hungary and this is also a Hungarian uh, client and the East European business type is a little bit I think a bit different from from the American or uh, or something uh, uh, and uh, well, there's some so, American clients like this too don't don't worry oh, about that okay. or uh, there was my assumption sorry about that yep. and uh, I just uh, what I am experiencing is that he don't care about anything he don't want to do anything from my, from his part you know to provide the details provide the hashtag you know, passive income got it exactly exactly and uh you know but he want everything to be working smoothly and perfectly uh and uh, uh i just uh, so you charge this client twice as much as your other ones right exactly not that's so that's i'm Okay, so I'm now we're getting you, to the real me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, I'm telling you, I, I, I think about it and I also uh, consider your advice uh, from before, but I'm at the moment where I'm doing this part time. Well, part time. I'm I'm working more sure. on 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 these uh, services than on my full time job actually, uh, and uh, I'm just uh, becoming. Uh, I'm actually in two months. I'm about to leave my my full time job, so I'm just. Dude, in congrats! The side Thank hustle. You so much. This is a huge. Hustle. This is a huge thing for me, and it's a big part. Uh, uh, is your uh, services as well? Like your videos really inspired me for it, uh, and um, so. Uh, yeah, I because of my situation, I I didn't. Uh, we agreed in a in in a price which is still in my situation is okay, but uh, kind of ridiculous uh, of his from his expectations. So and I just you need, you need to have a uh, come to Jesus conversation, so to speak, where you you reset expectations and you say, hey, um, I I want to continue working with you, and I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good mm -hmm. news is we can continue working together and I can do everything you request. Mm -hmm. Bad news is I have to charge you twice as much or we have to pull this scope back. Which of the two mm -hmm. would you like? And um, by doing it as a choose your own adventure to the client, you empower the client to make a choice. And mm -hmm. if they decide that choice one and two doesn't work, guess what happens? Choice number three appears and you fire them. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough four, but that's four, that's, four, that's four. why i'm a bit worried because i'm not in the position where i i, I really need to consider before i can fire they them, know you know? that so, yeah they i know, know I, I know they know that <laughs> so that's kind of like a chess play you know uh so hire a good virtual assistant who can mitigate that or be a mm -hmm. buffer or you know something like that another oh, thing you do is use time doctor or other time tracking software and just send mm -hmm. them an export 
Mm -hmm. Call it a day. Sure, sure, sure. No, uh, no, we already solved this issue because I, I already replied to him that like, listen, man, uh, uh, I'm definitely, I'm, uh, my soul is totally clear because I'm I'm doing the hard work. But uh, he, because he don't have the knowledge, I already like tried to explain to him how the system works and everything. But he thinks that like, well, uh, like for example, one calculation of the profit margin and everything uh, for him is nothing. But for me, it took like, you know, 10, 15, half hour, each each product yep. so that's the thing that like he does doesn't see the the uh, um the so work behind some it. softwares can help automate that and make him pay for it right so when you're an early boutique agency you paying mm -hmm. for software should be avoided at all costs have mm -hmm. the clients pay for the softwares and mm -hmm. and the way you sell it to them and say hey you want this uh done a certain way this software will do it and and the best thing about it is it will do it in perpetuity your way instantaneous then you don't have to call me up and ask me to run a report manually wait a couple of days it's there mm -hmm. and you know it's less than 99 dollars usd per month almost every software ever um uh, so that, that's how i'd go down that path go ahead sure. uh, just um i'm not worried about that uh, that part because i know i can handle the the client uh because uh, it's also my advantage that he's a little bit uh missing from the uh, information about the how Amazon system works and I'm aware of it that I can you know uh, handle it but um, I'm a bit worried because we are about uh, you know uh, eight weeks from now to go into FBA and uh, maybe there would be a there will be a few weeks where I'm uh, going to you know I, I'm not gonna have any task for that period but I'm, I'm doing weekly report for him. And uh, maybe that would be uh, like, I'm just a little bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, thinking in, in, in the future because how, so this how is you, when you need to create work, right? And, mm -hmm. and pitch him things, right? So you, your, your job as an agency owner is to put onus back on the client wherever possible, right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I have these seven ideas. Here you go. And the best thing about these seven ideas is that six of those will likely work on all clients and the seventh one might need to be custom. But mm -hmm. you send over those seven recommendations and say, hey, of these, which would you like me to prioritize this month? Clients sure. sometimes take three, four days to even respond to you and then you're following yeah. up and trying to add value. And so, um, and then when they say, well, why didn't you do anything? I was waiting on your sign off. And, yeah. and you push the onus back to the client whenever possible. Yeah, and, and that's actually why I'm doing and it's pretty well working. All right, thank you so much for the... No, nope, uh, those are great great questions today. Thanks for coming on. Hope to see you at the next summit. Maybe, uh, and maybe I have one more. Sure, sneak it in. I really appreciate it. Uh, just, uh, uh, I have another client who I'm just also just start to work with him. And <laughs> um, we focusing on selling on Europe. And... Yep. Um, I'm in a, I'm in his cent, uh, seller central account, and when I'm uh, click on the register uh, to Europe, the system doesn't do anything. I already contacted. I already opened. Are you are you logged into the admin? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it possible? Uh, so so which which country are they registered in today, if any? Um, maybe uh, so we registered the account recently, and yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, it was already pending uh, registration for for many uh, countries, which are, we don't want to do. At the moment, it's yeah. only showing up uh, um, USA, uh, Mexico, and uh, Canada. Got it. And, so you're trying uh, to you're trying to go from North America over to Europe. Got it. Exactly. Um, okay. So Just what I may did a mistake, and maybe that could be helpful. That uh, um, it was uh, the UK. It was already showing pending registration, but I clicked on cancel registration because I don't want to sell on 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 the UK. But maybe right. from the Amazon system is considering it as EU as well, so that's why it doesn't want to do it. So, so the the slowest option, but the best and easiest would be to use an Amazon account manager who's in sales, and then they would just get the account open for you and send you an invite. That'd be the easiest, but I say slowest because then you got to wait for the invite and connect the network, and that can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. um, other options would be just to refile the application using the same information. Generally speaking, I don't like doing that, but because mm -hmm. you hit the cancel, it might be necessary based on your mm -hmm. circumstance. The reason why I tend to not like it is because sometimes it creates a dupe and then it causes yeah. an issue. Just make whatever you do um, inside of the North America 
admin console, try and toggle over to Europe and see what you can figure out. If Europe shows up on the console, you're in, you're in okay shape and then mm -hmm. just file tickets, try and go out of a, you know, maybe it's on vacation mode, um, mm -hmm. go to the paperwork, make sure the identity verification is cleared, uh, file all the paperwork you possibly can and, and try and ticket Amazon and request. But uh, my prognosis is probably going to take you two weeks to sort that one out, unfortunately. Uh, account opening scenarios, when they're not immediate, tend to take a couple of weeks for whatever sure. reason. Sure, sure, sure. I really appreciated your time, man. And uh, thank you so much for everything because you're, you really motivate me. And also the other guy, the Josh guy's question yeah. was amazing. That was something, a, a really useful tool. As Everybody well. needs really the useful account, multi-account yeah, access. Great question from Josh yeah. as well. Awesome, man. Have a all great right. day and well, good luck doubling and doubling again between now and our next summit. All right. All right, man. All right, man. Take care. Uh, so for those that are just joining us, we're running my agency guy summits right now, my agency guy summit.com. Uh, this video right now will be the first and only free video as part of the summit. We're doing live Q and a today. If you want to come in and ask me a question, Click the link at the top of the video description to join our stream yard. You can come on camera and ask me a question, kind of like a TV show like we're doing right now. Um, I'll pepper in some, uh, some written questions here and there. Uh, you do have to have a webcam to come on and ask uh, questions. And we're going to uh, kick people out if they haven't turned their camera on so we can make room for others to join uh, behind the scenes. So we got OG and, and Hala behind the scenes. If you guys want to ask a question today, please come on camera and let us know and we'll, we'll tee you up. While we wait for that, we had some great questions uh, that first came up when we started the this, this stream. So I'm going to go to those. So Nobin says, hello. Uh, AMZ Joy says, what do you find is the most effective way to find new clients at the beginning? Uh, give away your work for free. I'm a big Alex Ramosi fan, uh, $100 million leads, very much the same casebook I would follow um, and, and just do a bunch of free work for people. Make sure you get in advance their willingness to be a reference and to be used in case studies so you can publish it to show off your work. Nobody wants to hire a guy who doesn't have a history. Nobody wants to hire a guy who hasn't done it before. Um, so doing it for free is the best way to get fast experience. And you don't have to do that for more than a month or two. Uh, and then the next client that signs up, you start charging them. And then you complete your free trials with the old clients and say, do you want to keep going? Here's my rate. And then over time, you keep raising your rates. You keep... Uh, asking for referrals, and then you start your content. Uh, and, and I had a, a really good um, case study that you guys could check out at myguy.agency slash case. And I'll put a link to that in the chat here as well. And and uh, we'll, we'll showcase this case study. I, I do have a full video where I walk through this in depth, so this will just be real brief. Um, but, but the nice thing about this case study is I walk through my financials, I walk through how we did it, where, where we're going, um, and how you know we started with warm outreach, content got me to 10 million, cold outreach got me to 20. What's going to get me to 50 is running paid ads. Uh, since we put out this case study, we've now signed up about 10 clients through paid ads via Google in the last 45 days or so. Uh, and we're getting some success and traction there. So I'm really excited about like trying to break into that fourth quad because it's the hardest, it's the most expensive, and you definitely shouldn't start there. Uh, worm outreach with one-to-one -one people you know, uh, that's where you need to start, uh, Nobin, um, for those that are starting out with uh, brand new agencies and, and trying to get things going. Um, all right. So on Facebook, they're asking for the link to join the StreamYard, if you could help out with that, Allie. Uh, let's go to the next one. So when I just started, which method should I use to get the first client? That's that's the free work. Love that question. Uh, David said, "Is a one-page website okay to start with? What do you what do you think to a link to a calendar calendar is good for lead generation?" Um, so mixed thoughts on this. I do think you need to have multiple pages, but to get started, something is be better than nothing. And just having something present. So you know, having your email on a real domain. Very fundamental. Don't just email them from Gmail. Steven at myamazonguy.com. I had that domain purchased in the first 48 hours of me deciding to go full-time on consulting. When I got laid off for my nice, cushy $200,000 job, I said, oh, I'm just going to do some consulting while I figure things out. 48 hours later, I started an agency. It was kind of accidental, not terribly intentional. And then I had uh, $43,000 in monthly recurring revenue, MRR, 
within the first 90 days of me starting my agency. And so it just really took off. I had to hire like crazy, really fast. Um, and I had the benefit of side hustle consulting for three years. So I really had a formulated plan. I knew what I was getting into. Um, and so side hustle consulting, definitely a really good recommendation. Calendly is a game changer, uh, especially since you can get your meeting scheduled and ask for a link to their Amazon store and ask for their monthly revenue before you even get on the call. Um, so you know what you're getting into and know what to prepare for. Uh, Benedict says, how do you get a good potential client database before starting the process of acquiring them as clients? I like Google Sheets. Uh, you could have all of your clients' information in a Google Sheet. You can have all of your prospects in a Google Sheet. I don't think until you get past a thousand prospects, you need to do anything other than a Google Sheet. It's free. It's easy. Uh, and you know, you're not trying to really hide that data. There's only you and maybe one or the two virtual assistants that are helping you with it. So there's really no risk. Uh, and and I, I think you can get away with that for a long time. Um, once you're ready to have a real CRM, I like HubSpot. Uh, I've been using that. There's Salesforce and many others out there. Um, I've, you know, I know somebody that used Hello Monday for their CRM. I wouldn't recommend that, but it can be done. Um, Asana is a project management software, um, but sometimes the, the, the project management and the CRM stuff blend together a little bit. Hello Monday is the best case example. It started as a CRM and then tried to morph into project management, which is why you can kind of get away with it, but then they got conflicting um, values or conflicting things they're trying to accomplish. So, all right. And speaking of Benedict, we actually have Benedict here. Welcome, Ben. How are you? You're on mute. Can you hear me, guys? Now I can. All right. All right. Welcome good. How are you show. doing? Thank you. I'm an agency okay. owner all the way from Germany. So I got a couple of questions. Most of the people uh, watching right now are in Europe. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. The American agency owners think they have things figured out, nah, but the Europeans, deep. they know they need some help. So you guys are the humble ones getting help today. So I speak to all you guys right, all the time. Is... All right. So Germany. Wait. Yeah. So I'm just going to shoot my questions pretty quick. So the first Maybe. one is, how would you go about contacting potential clients? Would you actually like just call them up straight away by phone? Would you send like, would you warm them up a little bit via LinkedIn? Would you do like an automated system? That's like where I'm at right now regarding that subject. Okay. How how many clients do you have today? Uh, four. And I got like uh, I got three pretty big clients. I would say like best sellers in like a bunch of categories, right? But like three four clients isn't enough right now. I'm at the point where like want to grow and like build a small team. Yep. So yeah. have you hired anybody yet to work for you? No, no, just like a, like sometimes I would hire like yeah. a freelancer just for con content things, right? Got it. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then how high drive are you? Are you fearless and willing to do anything? Yeah, sure. I'll go for it. Okay. So cold calling should be easy for you then. Uh, yeah, I've for done that, that are... in the past, right? In my regular like nine to five job, that's what I've been yeah. also doing. So. so for those that are detail oriented, they're more defensive. They will struggle with that kind of activity and they're going to like, threat trying to get on the phone right, yeah. gotcha. but somebody with high drive if you got phone numbers absolutely call them up right, right. And if, you, if you think about it if you made 100 phone calls between today and tomorrow do you think you could sign a client yeah sure i could exactly and so at four clients if you think you could add 20 percent to your bottom line in the next 48 hours all you had to do was spend eight hours cold calling boom that math checks out yeah. So, so right. on the screen here is one of the most fundamental quadrants of client acquisition, right? Like the four easiest, best ways to get clients, right? So yeah. when, when you first start out, you're at four, four under 10 clients, you're usually warm outreach. People you know, you're asking for references. You might make a post on LinkedIn. I do recommend that. Um, mm -hmm. Making content on YouTube, that's where it really starts to take off. That's where it gets one to many, right? And that's quad oh, two. And, and this is what got me to $10 million. Uh, you know, I got warm outreach to one mil, uh, 10 yeah. mil content. And, and so a lot of people would stop there and say, I'm done, right? Like, you know, they're yeah. good to go. We kept it going. We started doing <clears throat> cold outreach. Um, and I started cold outreach two years ago. Uh, and we didn't do cold calling really until like Q3 of last year. We just started sure. doing it. Email cold is dying right now. It's, it's it, at the very minimum, it's going through a metamorphosis. Um, email deliverability issues can't get into the inbox. Google makes major changes this month. 
Yahoo and all the other engines are yeah, I heard about like the like code emailing <clears throat> combined with like chat GPT and like personalize it, yada yada yada, like that sort of thing. So, but so cold emailing is absolutely dying, which means yeah. if you have a history of knowing how to do cold calling, then yeah, quad three, it. you're gonna have a huge advantage compared to other agencies. And go all in on that. And then all once right. you hit your your maximum client load for you, where you can't do sales anymore, that's when you need to hire somebody to do cold calling on your behalf and key up those meetings, right? And you, because you have an expertise in cold calling, you could SOP that thing in a weekend and tell them exactly what to do. You can monitor their calls. And then that's right, where that's you good. start creating leverage, right? So right now your time is money. Um, but over time, once you get 10 clients, 20 clients, one or two, you know, one, one full-time cold call specialist, your leverage yeah. doubles, and then you are going to be off to the races and they're going to burn through your prospect list in a month and you don't have to go buy more prospects and then things just really take <clears> off from there. And then quad four run paid ads, try and avoid that one unless you're an expert in it. Uh, yeah, but, do that, yeah. but so if, if you are more interested in cold calling than content, can you skip quad two? I think so. Um, but don't don't skip to the fourth quad and go into run paid ads until you've tested the other three, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do that. <clears throat> Thanks for the advice. Anyways, I would have uh, one more quick question. If it's go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, I got a client. <clears throat> He's in the uh, food industry. It's sugar substitutes. Yeah. And he wants to, yeah. Yeah. But he's doing pretty good. He's like best out in every category with every product. He's doing pretty well. So um, <clears throat> now he wants to go uh, pan EU, right? He wants to go uh, and sell into other marketplaces, French and Europe, uh, and stuff. Yeah. France and Europe, and um, but he hasn't figured out the issue with like changing the product information on the product, right? You have to change it to the different uh, country. Then you also have to do the recycling thing. There, you know, you have to sign up for the recycling of the product in every country. There's like different instances you have to sign up for. So, so each country is going to have its own regulations. Yeah, yeah. But in general, I recommend just go live with what you got today and, and forget okay. the regulations okay. until they force it on you. Now, yeah. there's some that was the plan for, for like this year because they, my client has been pushing it off, pushing it off. We had like a meeting today. So I want to do it like this year, starting off like as, as a new thing, go international, All right? So. Well, I mean, going live in those countries before you figure out all the regulations sometimes works, right? So, um, okay, yeah. for example, U.S. into Canada is probably the easiest one and the one I have the most experience sense, yeah. on. Um, you know, getting beauty products, topicals in Canada, NHP, and some of that's a lot more difficult. Um, but food items, generally speaking, um, between U.S. and Canada, not so bad. Uh, you just mm -hmm. I literally just add my ASIN and ship it over and we're, we're done. Um, I'm not as familiar with grocery in Europe, and you may you may have more knowledge on that specific niche. Mm -hmm. But the there is minimal downside to trying to launch in those countries and being told no after the fact versus trying to have everything ready and then go. All right, um, perfect. And, yeah. and and so the other thing too is like like take candy for example, uh, which is not quite your sector, but close. Um, uh, people they have some candy when they have like sugar free chocolate and stuff. So yep. Some people will will buy candy across borders all the time. So, for example, uh, a lot of German candy is sold in the States. They don't change any of the regulations to sell in the States. They just put it up and it starts selling. And, and so right. Europe, Europe is, let's be clear, Europe's a way harder marketplace to sell in than, than the States in terms of regulation. Um, and there's not as much sale. So it's so yeah. higher lift, less return. Uh, but but it is still possible to go across borders and still you know, significantly easier. And, and hopefully some of the EU shared responsibilities minus UK can help one, yeah, one time yeah. paperwork things and, and expedite it. Um, but I guess, I guess what I would say in closing is um, you don't need to become an expert on international logistics to, yeah. to be a successful agency owner. You can say, hey, I don't know anything about this and refer it out and, and, and still benefit from from finding that source. So, um, yes. you know, one, one of the guys that works at my Amazon guy is, is Kevin Sanderson. He's our VP of mm -hmm. marketing. He's got some experience. He even has like a course on how to go international. It's not going to help on your specific niche scenario, with yeah, yeah. but, but things like <clears throat> that, can expedite it. but when you're small, you end up saying yes to too many things. And so 
if, if you think about this problem for more than an hour and don't know what to do, just say no. And go I, I, I got you. Yeah. I invested a lot on that one before, like so much time to figure yeah. out for him how to do it. And I sent options, yada, yada, yada. But yeah, if, if you've yeah. got a core and your core is really good and you're a 10 out of 10 and you know, you can sell that thing over and over the more time it's you sell work it, for sure, the faster you're going to scale. So for example, I chose my Amazon guy, right? Like I'm all in on Amazon. Now I did yeah. spin up my Walmart guy and Etsy and eBay guy and whatever mm. else. I even have my agency guy technically. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, people are always going to know me for Amazon and I'm coattailing off the Amazon brand and I'm focused there. And so when somebody wants help with Amazon, I'm hoping I'm one of the first people they think of. Right. It's memorable. Yeah, it it's, easy to say, it's easy to spell. It's colloquial, you know, yada, yada. But but at the end of the day, uh, when you when you stick your stake in the ground and you say, here's what I'm going to sell. And then you just call up 100 people. Do you want to buy this? No problem. Next. You want to buy this? No problem. Next. You want to buy this? Yes. There you go. And it's easier for you to scale that because you already have the SOPs. You already know what to do and you can just rinse and repeat. All right, man. Thank you very much for all the information. And all right. Benedict all for your Germany. content. Yeah, man. Thank Take care. Peace. Thank you for joining the My Agency Guys Summit. We really appreciate you coming on and asking some great questions. Uh, you can continue watching from YouTube here. We're going to kick you out, make room for other guests. We got Brendan. How are you doing? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Thank you for having me. I'm Steven. Uh, My pleasure. Where are you calling in from? California. All right. It's nice and sunny over there right now. It is. Yes. All right. So I have a question. Um, so I've had past success with my Amazon business, uh, and I'm basically starting fresh this year for 2024. I have about $10,000 saved up to start a new business. And I'm wondering if you recommend I look into starting an Amazon agency, starting a new product, or starting a YouTube channel talking about my past success. Okay. And, and so you've had experience selling on Amazon. Is that, is that what you just mentioned? Yeah, I've, I've okay. had experience. I've sold products on Amazon. I've done a little over six figures in sales. Okay. Is that retail arbitrage or private label? Private label. Okay. And did you shut that down, sell it off? Uh, I shut that product down. Okay. Why did you shut it down? Uh, profit margin just got way too slim, too competitive for that product. Okay. And how long ago was that? Uh, I shut it down about, uh, honestly, like a few months ago. Okay. Months ago. All right. So the reason I'm, I'm, I'm investigating a little bit there is to understand, you know, you got your hand burned a little bit, right? Yeah. You probably made some yeah. money, but then it started to get a little, a little hot. Right. What, what I would recommend doing is picking one direction and going all in on it. So a lot of people try and go in multiple directions at the same time. And that causes paralysis and less gets done, generally speaking. So um, okay. the grass is always greener on the other side of the hill. Every product business owner is thinking about getting out and doing something different. You're thinking about opening up an agency. So I'm going to ask questions to see if we can narrow down, you know, where your real heart is and see if we can okay. figure it out together. So have when was the last time you did product research? Uh, it's probably been a year. Okay. So if you're if you're sitting on 10 grand and wondering and you haven't done the product research yet, why? Um I'm a little bit worried about um just how competitive Amazon is getting. Um and the profit margins are slimming down and I don't know, I guess I'm just a little bit worried. That's okay. about it. Yeah. If you lost that ten thousand dollars, would you still be able to pay rent and have a shirt on? Yes, I would. Okay, so you technically could do it. Yeah. But the sense that I'm getting from you is that you don't really want to do the product thing, which is why you're looking at other green hills. Is it, am I am I reading this right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I guess your homework, if you choose to accept it, is to try and rule out doing a product business. And so there's a lot of ways you could go about doing that. One way would be to go do product research and remind yourself how much you don't think it's going to work. Right. And, okay. and, and like go slay your dragon one way or another. 
right? Okay. Maybe while you do that exercise, you find a product, you fall in love with it, you do it, right? That's okay, true. That would be one way you could do it. Another way is you you just, you say, hey, I've done it. I don't think I'm qualified enough to pull this off. And and you say, I'm, I'm going to shut that out of my brain. Now, someone like me, I have a very difficult time doing that. And I have to go like spend time trying something and iterating before I can shut that part of my brain off. Okay. So you decide what works best for you, but your homework item is to try and rule it out. You're not trying to rule it in, trying to rule it out, right? So okay. sometimes the negative um, can be easier to prove than the positive. All right, okay. so now let's talk about agency. How many Amazon accounts have you logged into in your life? Uh, just my own. Okay, so you're not qualified to open up an agency today. Right. But... Uh, do you have a full-time job or are you free, you're you free right now? I'm basically free right now. Okay. So step one, if you want to do an agency, go do free work. So okay. if you had to classify your skills right now, you know, PPC, SEO, design, catalog, troubleshooting, merchandising, listing creation, launching, what is your number one skill? Um, I would say listing creation is probably my number one skill and like getting photos and videos for listings. So when you say getting them, what do you mean like going out and sourcing them, finding a photographer or shooting them yourselves? Like all of the above, like sourcing, yep. basically hiring a photographer. All right. So if you want to start an agency, you have a choice to make. You can be the okay. generalist or the specialist. The generalist is what do you need help with? Sure. I can do that. The specialist is, here is my very specific service. Here is the price tag. Do you want to buy? Okay, great. Let's move forward. So if, if you um, don't have a lot of general experience, it's often easier to start with the specific niche and then work your way up. So if listing creation or photography sourcing, which there's not a lot of margin there, by the way, okay. um, is your, is your hotspot, then you could go create a, uh, uh, a domain and build out a one page sheet where you say, here's my service. Here's how many listings I've created. If it's a good number, um, or here's examples of listings I've created and just show the picture since your live listings down um, mm -hmm. and, and use that to showcase your work and tell your story like that, like you mentioned early on. Right. And, and uh, here's how I did what I did. Here's how I can do it for you. And here's the price tag. Okay. And, so the, the agency ahead. would only, pay me once to do all that or is it like recurring it depends right okay. so a specialist niche here here's my service pay me 500 bucks i'll make your whole listing okay. or if you want a recurring model listing creation and design recurring models are the most difficult to create and that is because okay. scope is all over the place one client's got 100 SKUs, another client's got two how do you build a reoccurring model that fits everybody? It's, it's just generally not very easy. So one way I do it at my agency, uh, and we sell this as an SOP as part of our My Agency Guy package, is, is to have tiers. And I would say tier one, you get one design a month. Tier two, you get two designs a month. And then I'd go through and specify what that includes and an amount of copy. And I have it down to a T, man. Like this is very specific. And then Here's your price tiers, and every tier you go up, you get a cost savings. Pick okay. your tier. Now, generally speaking, I don't release those tiers to the public. I don't even tell the customers that I have design tiers. I just say, oh, based on what you have, I think you need this amount. Here's the price. And th if they say, no, nope, no problem. Let me go down to my next uh, you know, package. I don't, even, I don't use the word tier. I don't say anything like that. I just say, here's what else I can do for you. How does this sound? And then we find we we figure out where their comfort level is. You have to ask some probing questions sometimes. But I'll, I'll be honest: if I were in your shoes, I probably wouldn't try and solve a reoccurring model out the gate. I would go for okay. the finite. Give me a job. Here's the price tag. Like the sort of thing you would find on Upwork or other freelancing sites. Start with that. And okay. and the, the best thing about it is if you. You do three of these jobs and you start hating it, guess what? You're done. You don't have to do anything else, right? right? You just finish it and move on. But if you like it, you can raise your rates, you can hire people and start going down that path. Would you say that PPC is like the most important thing an agency can offer? 100%. But it's okay. also the most common competitor you're going to have. There, 
for every agency like mine that does everything full service, PPC, SEO, design, catalog, merchandising, and all anything in between that, there are a hundred PPC only agencies. Uh, okay. It's it's probably also going to be harder for you to start the PPC agency because you only have one account under your belt, and yeah. you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes on your first five accounts. I just guarantee you just you just won't even know what you're doing initially. Okay. So so if you want to do some free PPC work, by all means do it. But but be honest about your background or experience before you go in right. there because you're gonna mess people's accounts up initially. I just, I guarantee it. Unless you find somebody who's done no PPC and you're starting them out and you're testing things, you, know, you get a little bit more of a runway with that. Um, but stick to what you know is generally what I recommend doing and then expand on it once you're successful. All right. Thank you so much. All right, Brendan, diving into whether I should start an agency and how to do it. Oh, by the way, here's the other best net, effect, net benefit of starting an agency. There is literally no upfront costs, zero, oh, Okay, just okay. your time, right? You know, building a website and putting up a page and a Calendly and whatever, sure, whatever. But like, we're talking dimes and nickels instead of product investment of 10K, shipping it out to China, waiting six months. Now, I, I think some people listening to this are getting the sense for why I went all in on the agency uh, yeah. instead of the product side too, so. So would you say that starting an agency would actually might be easier than starting a whole new brand or it it is faster and easier um but it doesn't okay. necessarily mean you're going to be successful running an agency okay. sucks in many ways right like okay. what you may not have experience have you ever worked retail or customer service before uh no, no. buckle up <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because because you're gonna see the worst of mankind during okay. your service as an agency you will see people who will steal from you, who won't pay their bills, who will ask the world of you. You'll, you'll have people trying to get free work out of you all the time, and they will mistreat you. And in, in your world perspective, I guarantee you a year into this will be completely different, right? Like all okay. of your preconceived notions about other people will change. Now, having said that, it's a very profitable business to be in. Right. Margins are fantastic. I run a 43 to 45 percent net margin. Unheard of in the industry. I want to be clear. Most agencies I talk to struggle in that 15 percent net margin, but they're also happy doing what they're doing. And, and that's after they pay themselves. Um, but and they don't outsource enough. And there's all kinds of mistakes we could go into. But you're first starting out. Dabble. Do some consulting. Make some posts about how you're dabbling and, and you know. I'm, for the next 30 days, I'm going to be doing X, Y, Z for free and, and get some experience under your belt. Just test it out. Start with that. Okay. And if you like it, then start charging um, or go straight out the gate and do a special niche service like we talked about and start charging right out of the gate. Either way, I think, I think you'll find out quickly whether you want to do it long term. Okay. So you would, you would also recommend starting like a YouTube channel talking about like Amazon and all that? My, the f Day one. Day one of me starting my agency, before I even knew it was an agency, I made a YouTube video. Day okay. one. And my video was how to build a brand store on Amazon. This, today, this video has well over a quarter million hits. It is not a great video. However, everybody loved it. And it was super helpful, especially for its time coming up on six years ago. And, and so like that video still generates me clients. In my first... YouTube videos. I was putting my cell phone number out. I get calls years later. I find, you know, I went back and redacted it because I was like, I was done with that. But, but, um, you know, like I, I'm telling you, I grew millions of dollars in making content. If you just okay. tell your story and, and share your expertise, but be honest for where you're at. Don't call yourself an expert until you are right. Be like, Hey, I'm a, I'm a young guy. I've done X, Y, Z. I've generated a couple hundred thousand dollars. I'm starting out an agency. The benefit of hiring me is X, Y, Z, and then okay. document your journey and explain. And, and then once you get those clients under your belt, you start sharing stories about what you do and they resonate because people love that stuff, right? Like uh, think about this way. When I did sales, um, people would get on the phone call and for first 15 minutes, wow, I can't believe I'm talking to Stephen Pope. I I've watched 15 of your videos. You've helped me so much. Can you help me do this? There is no selling on those calls because they've already sold themselves. 
It's the Philip J. Fry Futurama shut up and take my money situation. So that's the power of content. Okay. One of our, you know, we're talking to Benedict about his cold calling. You know, that dude's a high drive, cutthroat, ruthless guy. Go in and, and talk to anybody. He's going to have a very different approach. Um, and he'll probably do content too. Don't get me wrong. But he, but he's going to go talk people into a, strangers on, on cold calls. You may not like that. You might be more defensive in nature than his offense, right? So you figure out what works yeah. for you and try and try and go from there. Okay. Thank you so much for your help. All right, Brandon. I, I, I love diving into that because a lot of people are thinking about starting agencies. Great talking with you. Uh, today we are doing the My Agency Guys Summits. If you guys want to sign up for that, you can go to myagencyguyssummit.com. Uh, $97 to sign up for the summits. And we have a lot of goodies and presentations. Uh, and by the way, almost 120 people have signed up for that in the past few days. Uh, so we've got a lot of great speaking content and whatnot going on right now. All right, let's bring in our next guest. So we got Amazio Works. Hello, hello. And hello. you're on mute. Here we go. Go ahead. How are you doing? Hello, hello. Where are you calling in from? I'm, I'm maybe calling, LA. And I'm calling. I'm on the Pacific, but I'm on uh, Vancouver. All right, Vancouver. my puppy. This is my Visla. Uh, oh, wow. This is Loki. Uh, it's gonna say hello and make a little visit. Hello. He's a good pupper. Yeah. All right. How can I help you? Good. First off, I want to say uh, I really appreciate your content. Everything. Um, your. Um, and this is what I'm talking about right here. Especially like your um, my agency guy. Um, documents of how to do all these sort of things i me and my team read it daily because we're, we're trying to go on that same approach um so just to give some context actually just just this morning i had a call with the client Th thank you by the way thank you I, I, thank you i appreciate you in this field i feel like you your team is the one that sets the baseline guideline for how to do certain things which i really appreciate um so like just this morning actually the main question i had was how to close a client so more specifically, yep. we had this, actually, we are a new agency, maybe started a new few months ago. Um, we have some case studies. We have some accounts that do seven, seven figures, um, but we're more so looking to bigger clients. Um, so we found this one client, um, they're a big brand overseas, but they were struggling to sell on Amazon. Um, so we had a few meetings with them. It went well. Uh, everything went well. Um, I think the one issue was the offer. Like, from watching your videos, I know that you do. How many clients are you at so far? We have about two to three, but okay. they're, they're, they're pre-existing clients. So my co-founder, he had existing clients, and then we sort of formed the agency now. Um, Got it. But not since so, they started, right? All right, so walk me into the problem with the offer. So like from watching your expertise in video, so we're, doing, like, we're a full-service agency like yourself. And so their listing had many issues from like the, um, the photography, listing optimization, inventory scaling. So we went um, the small revenue share and a small base fee commission approach, like two to 3% sort of thing, right? And then um, they they argued back that- I, why I do like that, by the way, like a retainer plus a small commission. Uh, yeah. Generally, it's fair to both parties. Yeah, because they, they were sort of at baseline, like they were selling a little bit on Amazon, but- there wasn't much going on, right? It was like a, a, lo a large process, right? But their main issue was that um, in the first month or two, they might not be profitable because we are trying to rank their products, right? So he said- Might not be profitable in the first couple of months. How about will not be profitable yeah, in the first we, couple we, months? we clarified, we provided like a spreadsheet of the um, estimates sort of thing. Like it won't be profitable, but that's the game, right? We wanted to rank your product sort of thing. But his argument was, why would we give you a revenue share if- we're not going to be making profit at that time, but even, even then we're going to be making a percentage of that two to 3% of revenue, right? They can be at a, at a loss, but we'll be still, still be gaining money from them, right? We're not going to profit base. We're going to revenue share, right? So that was his small- Which is what I recommend uh, because yeah. it's not your job to make profit. It's your job to grow the account. If they yeah. want somebody to make profit, agencies are not profit centers. Yeah, yeah. I, we told we them that too. Um, so I guess that's where the talk kind of staled, like- especially coming to the new years. So you need, you need a talk track, right? So one yeah. of the talk tracks I use for revenue share is saying, Hey, you want to incentivize us to spend more time in your account to, to grow with you. Mm -hmm. And and so the fairest way to do that is to have a small revenue share. Now today that only equates to a couple hundred dollars, yeah. but if we do our job, 
we're going to grow with you. And, and, and it's, a, it's only two or three percent. Wouldn't you want a partner who's incentivized to grow you? Yeah, that's sort of idea. I, I, I explained all this. We had good. It was good. I felt it was a good conversation. It was my first time ever doing a meeting. Like they had of like their CEO, the marketer. It was like it was it was really interesting. Was a little time. intimidation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I hopped in the call like, expecting one person, and then he's like, "Okay, wait." Uh, another guy comes in. Another guy comes in. Another guy. I had like a one-hour presentation. It went. I went well. I, I, I feel like it went really well. Um, but they were also talking about they were in talks with other agencies, just weighing their options, sort of thing. And I think what negated us was the offer sort of thing which is what what i feel personally so, so what did you hit for the offer what was the amount let's start with that it was like a 20 2500 or three it was more estimated 2500 to 3000 base uh, base um flat fee monthly and then uh -huh. i believe a two to three percent revenue share okay like, but you, you but so, you so know, starting you, with, with the size of your agency you're a slightly high um, yeah for probably right. what you can perform yeah. Um, European agencies are in the 2k flat model right now. That's like the most common. Um, we do, I, I do talk to some Eastern European, South African as well that are in more of the 1400, $1,500 range in the States. Uh, when I started out, I was at 2k myself. That was six years ago. Um, today, um, I'm more expensive than your quote that you Makes gave. Sense. But I also have 500 people to back it, 400 clients and case studies up the wazoo. So, you, yeah. so your fee might have been a little high now. Occasionally, you're going to get somebody to say yes to your fee, even though you're not polished and may not have um, everything to go with it. But what you could have done um, to get your first clients is, is you know, take take a couple flat deals in the door, right? Yeah. Before you go for the, so so if if rev share was so off putting to them, then say, hey, no problem. What if we went five hundred dollars more and did a flat deal and 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 instead of doing a three month contract, we did a six month contract. Would that would that work for you? Yeah, we we sort of we sort of did something like that. We said. Um, the first two months, uh, we won't include the revenue share because you, you might not be in profit. We're fine with a flat fee because we realized that that was sort of the issue. But I feel like it was still off putting to them just that small revenue share. It, it, it can be to some. Um, so, you know, I just increase a flat fee more than the difference of the revenue share when, when I'm trying to negotiate uh, in situations like that. But I really do try and, and sell like, you know, 98% of people, I try and sell them on the revenue share being in their best interest, right? So, um, the other thing you could have done is lowered your flat fee down um, a little bit and and to keep the revenue share. Generally speaking, though, you need cash in the door as yeah. a as a young, hungry agency. And so flat is better for you early on. Um, and so I think you probably hit them at a little high fee for what you might be able to offer compared yeah. to where their other options are. And so that might be why you might have lost that one. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned presentation. I'm not a real big fan of presentations. I yeah. like I like the cons uh, consultative approach where I go into the account and I say, and I show them on screen. I'm like, here's what I do here. Here's what I do here. Here's what I do here. Here's the price tag to do all that. Does that sound interesting? And they're like, yeah, okay, cool. Here's how much it would cost. Does that work? Is that yeah. unreasonable? No. Okay. Let's, let's move forward. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I would close 33% of, of meetings like that. Uh, my team closes closer to 25% and that's pretty dang good for me, for me to be able to do 33 and my team to do 25 um, that's really good leverage. Yeah. So before you do sort of the meeting, um, do you ask them for permission into their account to analyze no. their account health and everything? No, many agencies do. I don't, I, I, the, the amount of tools and information that we have today, like Helium yeah. 10 and, and just the ability to see what they're up to. And I know all their keywords. I like, there's so many things you can talk to without looking at an account. Now, if you want to go look at an account and audit, and you're going to spend the time to earn the business, that will sometimes improve your conversion rate. But here's the thing. I did 100 free audits a year ago, yeah. and the conversion rate on the audits was three percentage points lower yeah. than doing wow. no audit okay. for me. Yeah. And by the way, my audits were incredible. I mean, they were like worth a thousand bucks minimum. They were really, really good. So my experience has been lots of people will try and get free work from audits. So I try, I take a consultative approach. I try and wow them in 15 minutes. If I can't do that in 15 minutes and convince them they should hire us, no amount of audit will do that in my opinion. Now there are exceptions to this corporations, big, big, you know, companies, multi-thousand dollar deals, you know, $10,000 deals, all kinds of, you know, outliers and variables here. But for your average Joe, who's a million dollar business on Amazon, a 15 minute call where you show and tell, like, here's exactly what's wrong with your account. Try and say it nicely. Here's exactly, here are your opportunities uh, yeah. that are available to you. Does, do you want help with this? 
okay, cool. Let's let's move forward. Yeah, that makes sense. Because even prior, we asked them if they could provide us permission, and they were kind of hasty, like, why should we get permission? We, we don't know you this yeah, much. See, see, now you're know. creating more objections by trying yeah, yeah, yeah. to help them like, more, right? And in, the so beginning, they, in the beginning, they weren't giving clear answers as to why they weren't giving it. Then they actually hit us with, yeah, we're not going to give you access. You know, just do this. And then I, I get it from there. It makes sense, you know, from especially from a big business corporation like like I, they were just to give sort of access to them can be kind of off-putting. Um, but the second question, if, if you don't mind me asking that question. Yeah, go ahead. That? Yeah, this is the main question. So I see how- you're, you're, you're the sort of person I want to talk to today. So please continue. I have, I have lots of questions. Like I, actually, I have work in 30 minutes. I delayed because I wanted to <laughs> get on this call with you. I'm not going to lie. Um, second question. Um, so just to give some context, actually, uh, how I like started this agency. I actually started off in Amazon. I was uh, an Amazon uh, delivery driver. I wanted to make cash on the side and I, I was delivering packages. Right. Like, How do you like that? God, God bless you guys for bringing all those brown boxes to my doorstep. Yeah, actually, right. it's it's up and down. It de really depends on the people don't understand. It really depends on the area which you are. If you are in a tight complex with like apartments and buildings, it can be really, really tough, really tough. Oh man. Like some, some apart apartments have buildings where you can only go to one floor and then you have to go back down outside, buzz again, another person lets you because most apartments have like 10, 10 packages, right? So it can be really confusing. But if you're more so out in the suburban area, that's much more fun, you know? So and especially in the Vancouver area, it's a mix of both. Some days, it's like someday you know you're going to have a good day. Someday you, you, won't, you won't know you're going to have a good day, right? But it comes with these challenges. But actually, uh, like that entire process got me into understanding how, like, how big Amazon is of a yep. ecosystem. Half the economy. Um, the third party sellers, all sort of things, right? And then I eventually launched my own private labor products. I launched two products, right? Um, both went fine in the beginning, but eventually they just sort of fizzed out the um, different sort of many factors, right? Um, but actually, um, that's you hear that a lot, including yeah. from our last guest. Yeah. So that's when I looked into the agency game. I, I, like actually, my business, my my co-founder is actually really big in like um, the auditing, advertising game overseas. Um, so it's kind of a good mix of both. So right now, what we're doing is we're going the the content route, but more specifically, the short form content on YouTube, TikTok, IG, Facebook Reels. Because to be honest, like I feel like YouTube, the long form content, you have dominated the space already. Like everyone knows my Amazon guy, Stephen Pope. You know the video <laughs> content, that's right, <laughs> right. That, that's where everyone goes for the information, which um, you sort of originated, right? So uh, what we're doing is we're sort of doing short form it's, content. Um, there is room for more, I assure you. You could have a video outrank one of mine in the in the first week of it going up. But yeah. by all means, do it in other platforms. Keep yeah. YouTube for me, sure. Yeah. yeah. So so right now, like our goal is to make like five videos a week, like with me. Um, I'm fine with the camera. I, I have a whole setup. I have whole setup. We, we have an editing team and everything. Um, my main question is. Um, making finding the content sort of thing making getting content weekly like where should we get these ideas from um for you was it just off the top because you knew everything sort of thing <laughs> <laughs> i did not know everything nor do i currently know everything yeah. however i got asked every question ever and yeah. so what i would do is every time a customer asked me a question i would make content out of it even if i knew nothing about it yeah. I would go research it. I love learning. I love testing things out. And I would share my hot takes all the time. So a lot of my content, I'm wing it. And I just happen to get it right more often than I get it wrong. Very few times I get it wrong, in fact. Um, and so by answering customer questions and helping them, it, it, it really did well. Mm -hmm. The second way you could come up with content, though, might be um, easier because you don't have a lot of customers maybe asking questions at this okay. stage. Yeah. And that is simply write down the top 10 problems all of your customers have and then make 10 pieces of content on all 10 of those ideas. There's 100 pieces of content right there. And you might say, yeah. well, when I get repetitive, absolutely. And you should be, because guess what? Nobody watches every single Instagram reel from you. Yeah, right? uh, if you If you do Reddit or another platform and you see things get reposted from time to time, but they still have 10,000 upvotes, there's a reason for that. It's because they're part of the 10,000 today. Yeah. That's a super niche Reddit reference for those that get it. Um, anyway, Reddit's kind of gone downhill the last couple of years. I kind of yeah. hope it dies. Um, all right. So make lots of content, repeat and recycle nonstop. Um, and the other thing too is all of the people that work at your company, ask them what questions were you asked today uh, and put it all into a doc and just keep a content doc going nonstop. Um, how did you answer that question? Can I see the, e you know, like, 
we, we have our emails in HubSpot. So if I ever wanted to see any one of my brand managers emails on any given client or topic, I could go in there and just start making content that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It makes sense. I feel like I'm at, I'm at the stage where once I st just make the first video, um, I'll keep posting. Cause we have, we have a team, we have a guy that has content approach. Yep. We, get, we have a guy that makes scripts. I do the content creation. We have editing team sort of thing. I feel like we have, we have a good team in balance. Um, but yeah, um, well, well, very good. I keep looking over to my left because Loki has gotten into some dog treats and a bucket okay. of them. And he's like, I think yeah. he figured out how to open it up, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. All right. So thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. I wish you the best Excellent. of luck trying to yeah. trying to close some more deals. Yeah. Uh, the more experience you get, the easier it gets. That's the good news. Um, yeah. But you got you got a lot ahead of you. I appreciate Steven. Um, I appreciate all the work you've done for the, for the system, Amazon agencies for all of us. My um, pleasure. Hopefully I meet you in person one day once we, we scale. Our hopefully, business. hopefully not. I like staying at my house. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks for coming on the Miami, my agency guys, summit.com today. Uh, for those that haven't signed up for our summit yet, uh, there's still a chance tickets are $97. Today is the free, uh, free AMA. Uh, there'll be lots of great information from other agency owners. We have partners uh, from all over the place coming in to describe how they solve problems for their own customers. So it just won't just be ideas for me. Lots and lots of stuff you can look at. So my agency guy, summit.com, $97, sign up for that. We've had 125 people in the last uh, week sign up for it already. All right. So we got time for a couple more guests potentially. Uh, so if you haven't joined yet, you want to come in and ask me a question on camera, just click on the link at the top of the description, come into our stream yard, come on camera and ask me a question. So we got Cameron, how are you doing? Hey man, doing great. What about you? I'm doing good. Where are you calling in from? I'm from Pakistan. Love your energy. I just enrolled for your summit and excited for learning from that. All right. Well, wel welcome to the agency guys summit. How can I help? Okay, so my question is, we are a small agency, six-figure agency right now. So my question is, we are managing different type of clients, but main services are Amazon advertising site for CPG brands, supplements, and uh, beauty category specifically. So, so you like the hard I, stuff. Yeah, it's, like it's really hard, hard stuff, but I love that. I love that. So yeah. uh, we have really good success rate in this domain for our clients, but definitely we are working with 10 to 15 max clients. So we grow okay. them 100%, like 100K to 200K per month. Uh, and some small clients, uh, their revenue is post 10,000, 15,000. So uh, my first question is, uh, how to charge our clients? Like right now we are charging a fixed price, like $1,000, $1,500. But when mm -hmm. a brand hitting like 100K per month and we are scaling and them to 200 value. Yeah. Yeah. You so want to charge how, more. How I would want to charge, charge more. Them? So um, we actually started talking about kind of the small revenue share components. Um, so somewhere between 2 and 3% can be a really big help. Um, and so if they're at 100K, now, now the, ch the, the challenge that you might have is that you're 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 at commodity pricing, and so a revenue share of, of that size would be more than double your your flat retainer right now. So you might want to just go for a small percentage and 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 go for like one percent. And and a lot of people um, won't balk at that. The other thing you could do is you could you could do a different model where you you charge incremental, like five percent of increment um, above the baseline. Now the challenge with increment baseline is the negotiation process is significantly harder and much more of a pain in the butt and it can slow down sales and hurt sales. So I, I'm a big fan of just keep it simple and, you know, flat model plus a rev share and, and take it or leave it. And it seems to work out pretty good. Um, if you feel like you're building really good, strong relationships, you can always go back to those clients where you've done a good job and said, Hey, our scope's gone up. We've doubled your business. Uh, would it be okay with you if we charge you an extra $500 a month? Now, some are going to say no, and maybe a couple will say yes. Uh, but the ones that say no, you can go back and say, well, hey, uh, we're not able to provide the same services unless you pay us more. And, you know, you can play that game out a little bit longer, but it, it is very difficult to increase rates on current customers. And it's uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, so generally speaking, sales for new deals is is the best way to experiment your, your, your sales model and, and try that. I do. I am a big proponent of a small revenue share components, um, and I and I think it's fair to both parties because 
you get incentivized to help them grow. Do you want a partner who will be incentivized to grow? Yes, of course I do. Well, you want a partner who's going to spend more time on your account? Yes, of course I do. And, and you just try and find ways that articulate in their best interest and in your best interest. Sounds good. Okay, my second question. We, uh, for those brands who are managing our Amazon side, we are, for some of them, we also manage their Walmart sites. So uh, okay. should I also start offering our Walmart services or uh, should we stick with our Amazon and focus to grow on this side? Because definitely we are still like really low okay. and first target is achieving a, a seven figure agency uh, title. There's, there's in no, yeah, there's no wrong answer to this question. Um, so first of all, congratulations on getting the success you're at 14 clients, 100K. Uh, doing Amazon and Walmart, doing the hardest categories ever and and having some success. You know, you took one client from 100K to 200K or multiple clients. Those are fantastic things. So the reason why there's no wrong answer to your question is, is because it's just, it depends on where you want to scale. Now, it's harder to run a business the larger your service offering gets. Um, you're still relatively smaller. You only have 14 clients. So it's not a lot of chaos. But the amount of people you got to train on Walmart just doubled, right? Like, and the, the amount of people who can work on Walmart just doubled. The stress on those people is tripled because they don't have a lot of support. And, and so those are the challenges that you run into, right? Um, so it depends. Do you want, you know, what, what's, the, what's your goal? Do you want fast revenue growth? And doing everything could sometimes lead to that. Alternatively, sometimes Focusing in on a specific niche is faster to grow um, because you're a 10 out of 10 on it and you can speak to it 24 seven. So it just depends on what your goals are. Uh, but I, honestly, I don't think there's a wrong answer to that. I started my Walmart guy. It's less than 1% of my business. There's plenty of room to grow on Amazon alone. That's one way you could look at it. There's also a lot of hype for Walmart, but it's also kind of like a stick in the mud at the same time where it's like Walmart's not really doing as much. Your clients won't be as happy on Walmart. I'll tell you that right now. Makes sense. Great. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it, man. Well, my pleasure. Good luck, Cameron, over in Pakistan. Thanks for coming on today. We appreciate all the questions we've gotten so far. I'm going to clean up our show today by going into some of the comments we've had on the videos so far and answer some of them. I'm going to go to the most recent and then uh, work my way backwards. Uh, do we get a recording? Yes. Anybody that signs up for the MyAgencyGuysSummit.com. Um, we'll get a copy of, of this as well as other presenters uh, that showed up today. Probably should have had a banner uh, showing all the other presenters, but you can see some of them. Uh, actually, let's see. Let's see. Do we have it on the site? We do. Let me show this. Let me show the website here. And uh, all my team took care of everything to build this. It was really great. Uh, so we've got John Cavendish of Seller Candy. We got Kyle Hunt, Lean Agency Coach. I love Kyle's LinkedIn post. Mina uh, with Trivium Group, really strong PPC agency. Justin Rove, Impactable. Michelle Bonadana, Vantage BP. Philip DiOrazio uh, um, with Palmetto Digital Marketing Group. Say that 10 times fast. Uh, day two crew right here. We've got John Tilly, Jeff Skolnick, Rito Java, James Jordan, and Jalad. Many other great partners coming our way. $97 to grab your ticket. Go to my agencyguysummit.com and uh, you can snag all those will be recordings you can get available as well also if you want to get special discounts on hiring me for coaching uh, there is part of that as part of the program you get 100 bucks off or basically get the summit for free if you hire me for a coaching session uh, let's keep going down uh, amazon made easy as f i'm loving this well thank you very much uh, be seen what is the best way to find a client if if i wear to start an agency today um, social media, without a doubt, content creation, and basically talking to everybody you know. Be like, hey, uh, I am doing free PPC for the next 90 days. Do you know somebody who would like some free PPC work or whatever service that you're trying to do? Uh, we've got somebody offering PPC services. Once you start an agency, how do you scale up in offering client other services such as A-plus content and SEO? Um, I'd say A-plus content is probably the easiest one to add uh, because you just hire designers. Uh, and there's there's some good margin there. It's just the difficulty is in the the English and the translation when you outsource. Uh, some of those challenges can come up. Uh, but hiring a designer is very easy to do for agencies. So I would I, I would start there. SEO way more complicated. Now I do offer all of my Amazon SEO knowledge for free, and you can recreate it and follow the same process. Multiple SEO phases. You can find my content just typing in SEO phases. My Amazon guy. 
Um, but it's a lot harder to convince a customer to pay you to do their Amazon SEO. Uh, so I generally don't recommend expanding there um, publicly and just do it privately as part of your, your normal package. Uh, appreciate your efforts from Ash. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, Steven. I just need your advice. Uh, I know nothing about digital marketing, but I'm interested and would like to learn. Please advise and guide me how to start, what's important, et cetera. That is an impossible question to answer uh, succinctly. Uh, suffice it to say, you need experience uh, and you need to be, pro probably what I would say to you, go become an intern at an agency. And I'll plug my Amazon guy here. If you guys want to get experience, uh, you can go to myamazonguy.com slash internship. And we hire people with zero Amazon experience. And uh, we got this really funny picture of interns. Uh, my favorite is the redhead with the glasses. Uh, and uh, you can, you can, we've hired hundreds of internships. This is an evergreen role. We're never going to end our internship program. And the reason for that is um, agencies are a high churn model. And so I found my best way to make a good margin was to just teach a lot of people with no experience. And that's how I built my model. This doesn't work for most people. Don't try and recreate this necessarily. But for those that are good teachers, uh, hiring interns can be one of the most cost-effective way and rewarding because you create careers. You help these people. Uh, and it's going to be very, very beneficial. So here's, here's me. Uh, I was over in the Philippines. Got to shoot a nice little clip with a couple hundred Filipinos. That was lots of fun. I'll, I'll be going back to the Philippines here shortly. Um, okay. Jamie says, Stephen, I'm an American trying to grow an Amazon agency, but I definitely don't have it all figured out, brother. So I need your help. Well, uh, my agency guy is built to do just that. Uh, we sold a lot of, we sold thousands of Amazon SOPs. And we noticed that 40% plus of our customer clientele were agencies. That's why I created my agency guy to serve the agencies who have nowhere to turn. Uh, Amazon seller support sucks. And, and so we created SOPs on how to navigate all of these different challenges and where to start. And so, Jamie, we're definitely here to help you. Um, let me know how I can help you. Uh, Kayla says, how do you prioritize tasks? Focus on the number one best-selling ASIN and optimize all aspects or optimize certain areas at the same time of multiple products that sell well? Kayla, there is no wrong answer to this question. It's, it's really dependent on your own personal take and preference. Um, scope can be an answer to this question as well. Like, depends on how much the client is paying you. Uh, the other thing I would say is, uh, where do you think the biggest impact can be had? Start there. So for example, I think the main image on Amazon is the most important, most impactful. We call it the Amazon uh, image CTR hack. And we help customers all the time there. And we'll start there. PPC is probably the second, uh, SEO third, design fourth. Catalog troubleshooting in a weird fifth, but sometimes first, if the listing's yanked and other challenges that can come up, um, strandings, suppressions, et cetera. Um, so it just depends. Where do you think is going to be the most beneficial to the customer? The other thing you can do, Kayla, is just ask the customer, what do you want? I find that if you just ignore all other agencies, ignore all of your competition, and just simply ask customers, what do you want? and give it to them, you have a massive successful business waiting to happen. And so that's what I've been doing for the past six years at my agent, my, my Amazon guy, now my agency guy, um, and we're expanding the business accordingly and doing what agencies need now. Uh, Stephen Lawson says, and as always, thanks for providing so much value, Stephen. Do your agency SOPs include wholesale specific SOPs, especially specifically on operations side? Uh, so we do have a package deal on that. Ali, if you could post a link to where we include, we have a, a wholesale formula addition uh, to our agency SOPs as a package deal. We do, Stephen. Um, I would recommend that for you. Ali will post a link for you so you can take a look at that. What is your advice in scaling an agency in Europe? Uh, so CISA, I would say stick to what you understand. Uh, the riches are in the niches. And the more localized your talent pool, the bigger advantage, the lower margin. However, depending on where you are in Europe, you may need to outsource to other countries like the Philippines, like Pakistan and otherwise. Um, but, but in general, uh, Europe is a great place to start an agency right now. Here is why. Your competition is really weak. Now, for the European agencies out there, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, and, and the rates are super low right now. And so what's going to happen is you're going to see rates go up. Agencies are going to start charging more in Europe 
and the, the clients are going to be able to pay for it. Why? Because Amazon is growing in Europe, uh, you, you know, especially Germany and the UK and up and comers in Spain, Italy and, and other, other areas, Netherlands, et cetera. And so if you are in one of those countries and you started an Amazon firm that specializes in your country, you have a huge advantage. You have a local population you can tap into, a culture you understand. And, and so it's just a great place to start an agency right now because the competition is immature, it's primitive. And, and so it's, it's very easy to do. Much harder in the States right now, still very doable though. Uh, we'll take a couple more questions here as we wrap up today. I actually have to take a sales call in five minutes. Uh, this is genius. Love your passion about teaching and providing a place for interns. Thank you very much. Carlos says, greetings from Spain. A lot of people today. How do we get clients? Well, since I, I have kind of given some peaceful ideas on uh, piecemeal ideas on this uh, throughout our session today, if you would like to pay me lots of money to get my best ideas, go to my guy.agency and we're selling our SOPs on how to get clients. My full acquisition model, you get copies of my contracts, copies of sales calls from last month with my own sales team, where I talk about how to do all of these things uh, and, and do that. Uh, so uh, otherwise, make content and call everybody you know and give out free stuff. Law of, law of reciprocity, read a bunch of persuasion books. You'll see what I'm talking about. That's how you can get clients uh, in the meantime, if you don't want to buy the program. That is our show today. Uh, you can purchase things from me if you want to support the show by going to myagencyguide.summit to sign up for our summits and see all of our great speakers that are coming up in the next today and tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have a behind-the-scenes AMA tomorrow as part of it. Uh, so if you want to keep your question private, you can do that as part of the summits. Uh, we have SOPs, we've got the summits, we've got lots of cool things all here to serve all over at myguy.agency. Thanks for watching our summit today. It's my pleasure. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guy, a $20 million agency, I'm now the founder of my agency guy, and we're here to help other agencies grow. So hopefully you found some value. If you like today's show, whether you're watching the replay or live right now, hit that thumbs up, helps us with the algorithm, add a comment with one thing that you liked or learned. Uh, it helps us know where to focus more of our content. And if you watch this with the replay and have a question about something, you never know, I might come back and answer it for you. So leave those comments. That is the myagencyguysummits.com. We'll see you guys later.